We often see in movies, the hero gets shot at, makes a heroic jump into the water, and miraculously survives. But in real life, can water really protect you from bullets? And if it can, then up to what depth? Let's take a scientific deep dive and find out. Can water really stop a bullet? All the guns you see here, pistols, revolvers, rifles, sniper rifles, are designed for standard surface level firing. Take the 50 BMG sniper for example. Its bullet travels at a speed of 3300 kilometers per hour and has a firing range of up to 7 kilometers. But if the same sniper is fired underwater, the bullet will stop within just 4 to 5 feet. And there's a high chance it will shatter into pieces. Let's understand in detail why this happens. Generally when a gun is fired, the bullet experiences resistance from air particles. This force isn't very high but it plays a key role in determining the bullet's range. The air around us has a density of 1.25 kilograms per meter cube. This means that a cube measuring one meter on each side would contain about 1.25 kilograms of air. So when a bullet is fired, air particles try to resist its motion. As a result, the bullet keeps transferring some of its energy to the air while moving forward. Once its energy is completely depleted, it comes to a stop, and that defines its total range. The effective range refers to the distance at which the bullet still retains enough speed and power to penetrate its target. Now let's talk about water. If we take the same 1 meter cube and fill it with water, its density would be 1000 kilograms per meter cube. This simply means that water is 800 times denser than air. When a 9mm pistol is fired, the bullet exits at a speed of 1260 km per hour. Due to the high density of water, the bullet stops after traveling just 2 to 3 feet underwater. However, let's assume you have a powerful 50 BMG sniper rifle and its bullet exits at 33,000 km per hour. In that case, it might hit the target underwater. But as soon as the bullet comes in contact with water, it'll either break apart upon hitting the surface or shatter into pieces after penetrating one to two feet. The main reason behind this is drag force, which is directly proportional to the square of the bullet's velocity. If the bullet's speed is doubled, the drag force becomes four times greater. And if the speed is quadrupled, the drag force increases by 16 times. When a bullet hits water at such high speed, it cannot withstand the intense drag force and breaks into fragments. So the more powerful the gun you bring near water, the more likely it is to fail. In fact, there's a high chance the bullet may not even enter the water. However, a normal pistol with a speed of 1260 kilometers per hour can penetrate two to three feet into the water. The bullet won't break apart, but its speed will gradually reduce and it will sink. There's another important factor. The angle at which you fire also plays a critical role when shooting into water. Let's say we have a scenario where multiple shooters are positioned with their weapons, aiming to hit the target. Now if the shot is fired at an angle between 5 to 15 degrees from the surface of the water, there is a high chance that the bullet may not even enter the water. And even if it does, it is very likely to break into fragments. Some studies suggest that a bullet can properly penetrate water only when fired at an angle greater than 11 degrees. Now consider a shooter firing straight down with a 50 BMG sniper. As soon as the bullet hits the top layer of water, it experiences intense drag force and breaks apart after penetrating just a few feet. However, if someone next to him fires a pistol with a speed of 1400 kilometers per hour, that bullet can travel six to seven feet underwater. After that, the bullet speed will drop and it too will sink underwater. Now let's assume the target is just half a foot underwater and you're holding a pistol. You can fire at it, but still there's a very low chance that your bullet will hit the target. Here comes the second major reason. When a gun is fired in the air, there's a powerful explosion behind the bullet, which propels it forward with great force. The gun's barrel is designed in such a way that when the bullet exits, it spins at high speed while moving toward the target. Now imagine there's a strong wind while you fire. The bullet will be slightly affected as the external wind forces will disturb its path. However, this is where the bullet's rotation comes into play. It's called a gyroscopic effect. 
When the bullet rotates at high speed, it gains significant angular momentum, generating an invisible force that tries to cancel out the effect of any external forces. Actually, this invisible force is the effect of angular momentum, which is called gyroscopic stability. To put it simply, imagine a spinning top. When you try to push it, it resists and maintains its balance. The same principle applies to a spinning bullet. This rotation helps in air, but in water it becomes a problem. When a rotating bullet enters water, it doesn't travel straight. Instead, it changes its path due to the resistance and turbulence. So under such conditions, hitting the target becomes even more difficult, even if the target is positioned close to the surface. Now suppose you yourself are underwater with a gun and the target is also underwater. What will happen then? In this condition, the gun barrel will also fill with water. Still, the gun can technically fire. But once fired, the water inside the barrel will apply a strong drag force on that bullet. And the bullet will barely travel a foot before stopping. If the drag force is too high, the barrel could even burst, because the explosion is pushing the bullet forward while water resists its motion. However, there are certain rifles designed specifically for underwater use, like the Russian-made APS underwater rifle. Their projectiles are long, thin, steel needle-like structures, and most importantly, they don't rotate. That's why they move in a straight line and can effectively hit targets underwater. Now it gets really interesting. How do these needle-type bullets avoid the drag force of water? This is due to a fascinating concept called supercavitation. When these needle-type bullets are fired, their speed can range between 3,600 kilometers per hour and 5,000 kilometers per hour. At such high speeds, when water molecules collide with the bullet, they don't have time to move aside. The pressure drops so rapidly that the water turns into vapor. This vapor forms a gas bubble that completely surrounds the bullet. Since the bullet is no longer in direct contact with water, it doesn't experience drag force, allowing it to travel much farther underwater. With supercavitation, these bullets can travel up to 50 to 100 meters underwater. Some might wonder, surface gun bullets also have high speed. So why can't they achieve supercavitation? The main reason is their design. Bullets from surface guns are made aerodynamic to travel long distances through air. These bullets have a larger surface area, and as soon as they enter water, the drag force becomes very high. On the other hand, needle-type bullets have a much smaller surface area, which results in less drag and the formation of vapor bubbles. Supercavitation works only when the bullet speed is so high that the water in front of it turns into vapor, and when its surface area is very small. Surface gun bullets cannot cross this cavitation threshold, which is why they fail in underwater conditions. So finally, there's no real point in firing a surface gun underwater. Subscribe to the channel to watch more amazing videos like this. Thank you.